Well, thank you, our distinguished guests from overseas, Professor Lin, Professor Shen, and everyone. Welcome to our panel discussion on international guidelines and comprehensive testing for high quality exosome. Um, this session was organized by Taiwan Society for ED, um, Taiwan ED Alliance, and PMIA. Um, Precision Medicine Industry Association. I'm Chris Tai, the president of PMIA. And the driving force behind this special session is a shared vision. Professor Lim, Professor Shen, and I, we share the same vision that EV will have high potential to revolutionize cell therapy and diagnostic industries. But, but, but at the same time, we are all aware of the risk posed by poor quality. And that's why we have gathered here today to discuss the current state of EV production and the needs for comprehensive testing so that we can avoid the dangers associated with poor quality production. And additionally, I'd like to take this opportunity to share PMI's vision and the goals for the next two years. About two thirds of our members are molecular diagnostic and genetic testing company so we aim to foster more active collaboration with related industry to explore new opportunity in emerging market. Um, this field, the field of EV, is definitely one of the most promising area that our members can make significant con contribution and impact. So I hope in the future that TSEV, TAEV, and the PMI can work together to make our contribution to improve the quality system or the total quality of EV research and production in this region. And thank you so much for joining us. With that, I'd like to introduce our mentor, our big leader, Professor Lin, to give us an opening remark. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Professor Tsai. On behalf of Taiwan EV Academia Industry Alliance, which was established just yesterday, and this, this alliance will serve as a platform between the academia research and industrial development. And I strongly believe that focus on the uh, quality quality control and quality assurance, we can improve our uh, utilization of uh, EV in the field of uh, PG treatment, uh, drug delivery, and diagnosis, diagnosis. And I'm very honored to host this uh, uh, quick technical spotlight. And I'm, I'm looking forward for the further very uh, this uh, very fruitful discussion today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Lin. Uh, once again, it's my great honor to introduce another great leader in this field, Professor Shen. Yes, okay, uh, Dr. Lin, and all my guests, and uh, uh, President Tsai, and all the, uh, you, and uh, welcome to join uh, this uh, panel discussion. Okay, so we have uh, we invite many different uh, uh, experts from different overseas, from different country, from the Inha from China, and uh, Saikal from uh, Singapore, and Oshia Sensei from Japan, and also the Yongsong from Korea. It's uh, all the neighbors, and we actually join together. We have this uh, uh, Asia Pacific. Uh, society meeting together here today and also we take this opportunity and have all of them and to share their experience or the opinion about the EV in uh, biomedical development in the future. Okay, so I guess uh, first of all I will try to introduce all the four uh, overseas guests and the first is the professor uh, in and now, Professor uh, Yin actually is in the uh, Tsinghua University in China, and actually he is uh, also uh, in the get involved in the JEV journal. Okay, 
And so he has a lot of experience in the EV research. And actually, he just uh, uh, go back to China a few years ago from US. OK, so next. Uh, also, the Oshia Sensei, I'm from Japan, and uh, he actually is also the pioneer in the Japan uh, EV research, and he also established the Japan Society for Adjustable Vehicles and run very well, and so that's why uh, we have a very uh, strong, coherent together in terms of research and also promotion of EV research in not only in Taiwan, but also in the uh, Asia Pacific area. And uh, Oshia Sensei actually, uh, he was, uh, uh, his dad actually was in the NCC National Cancer Cent Center in Japan, but he moved to the uh, Tokyo Medical University. And so now he is a professor there. And also the Yong Song Go from South Korea. And actually he is a Pohan uh, University of Science and Technology. Okay, and he actually is also very pioneer in EV research, and he actually have a strong collaboration with the uh, the founder of the International Society for Extracellular Vesicles when he was in uh, Sweden. And also the Cyclone Lin and from Singapore. And he is a, a research director in the ASTAR in Singapore. It's like uh, our uh, DCB, right? Time. <laughs> Okay, and she actually is a, a pioneer, the first person to uh, isolate the stem cell exosome and then to uh, test the role or the synaptic role of the uh, MSC derived exosome. So that also, she also, uh, also uh, established the EV society in Singapore. And so I believe all of the experts from around the Asia Pacific, actually, we have a good relationship and we can help together. And because all of the different countries now, we still try to explore the guideline. So that's why today we try to have this uh, panel discussion. We can have some common uh, idea together and then we can really help each other and to, develop, uh, to really push uh, EV development in the biomedical. All right. You want me to oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so also the uh, uh, Lin Zhou Yan Bu Zhang. Huh? Okay, so the Dr. Lin, and he was the former Minister of the Health and the Welfare in Taiwan. And although he is a clinical doctor, but he's very, very uh, eager to push the EV really for psychopathic because the, uh, in the clinical aspect, and he saw the EV probably as a good uh, new uh, modality for those uh, cellulitics. Okay, and then he already introduced himself, so I don't want to spend much time. And then we, before we look to the panel discussion, so the question time will give uh, some of the uh, opinion about the EV challenge. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for listening. So let me give you a brief background as a basis for today's discussion. So our team have studied all these eight different versions of guidelines. And we have two takeaway, two observations that I'd like to share with you. Um, compared to the early version, say 2014 and 2018, early version of um, Miss EV guideline, the latest one, namely the French one, Evolve, or the draft of 2022, and the China one, and Japanese one, TMDA. They all share one thing in common. What's that? In view of the increasing number of clinical trials, and even drug development, all these new relative new guidelines put more emphasis on clinical grade, clinical trial, or even drug development. Not like the early stage, talk about research, all kinds of research tools, which is very important. But nowadays, a pressing issue is how to develop a, even a better quality system to assure that all these products will meet the clinical criteria, or even for the drug development. 
So when we were our team was reading all these words and sentence, for me, I saw a clear picture like this. So in each one of the latest guidelines, you will see the address every step of respectively to address the issue from very beginning, the donor qualification, uh, all the way down to process, manufacturing process, how to do the QA, QC for this process, according to a more um, complicated process, say purification, enrichment, and so on. And then for the product analysis, all the way down to, oh yeah, and then, sorry, function test, and more disease specific function test. All the way down to what? Drug development. That's where toxicity, pharmacokinetics, um, tumor regenerativity, all this coming to the picture. So it's very different setting, and it's time for testing, molecular diagnostic industry to come in and make contribution. To work together with the um, EV industry to jointly promote a better quality. The second observation is that we do a comparison with three different versions under MICEV from 2014, 2018, all the way down to 2022. We see this field of research is still in its infancy. Is it a time to have more timeline or even regulation? I leave it as an open question for our panel discussion. With that, I'd like to welcome all the panelists and Professor Shen, moderator. Thank you. to the uh, panel discussion. And so according to the President's uh, introduction about the development of the guideline in a whole the world in terms of uh, EV research or uh, industry uh, development. And so we try to have the opinion from all of you and to see we have a common thing together and then we can provide for everyone if they are interested in the research or in the uh, biomedical development. Okay, so uh, so based on the the type the the scene of this uh, panel, so so first thing I would like to uh, ask all of you, probably each of you just uh, spend two or three minutes to uh, share your uh, opinion about what's the role or what's the what your opinion about the EV in precision medicine, and particularly in the diagnosis, diagnostics, therapeutics, even the drug treatment system, etc. Okay, so we probably started from uh, Han. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tano. It's an honor to be part of this panel. Uh, for me, I think there's no doubt EV has very diverse function in like all of it, basically. Diagnostics, uh, diagnostics, prognosis also, and therapeutics. Actually, I had a dinner last week in Shanghai with a senior VP of Wuxi Biotech. The, uh, this person is oversees a lot of like the CMC of biologics of Wuxi. And we talk about this could be become like really like a bottleneck for EV um, research really because um, compared to like other biologics, really to have a robust high quality control of EV, in my opinion, is, uh, is definitely like actually critical, which is actually like I think this discussion here is very important. I will stop here now. And how about what she asked? Uh -huh. Okay, so maybe I'd like to uh, introduce what happened during the COVID-19 in Japan. Uh, one thing uh, is the uh, Society for Regional Medicine in Japan. Because Japan is a very, quite unique uh, country working on IPS cells and uh, MSC for the patient. <laughs> it's a very specific uh, the fixed law by the PMDA, which is a Japanese FDA. But the uh, Regional Medicine Society people say something that EV could be a kind of uh, regenerative medicine <laughs> product. But I'm afraid of that. So then I set up the committee of the uh, society members and we joined 
GSM members, Japanese Society AB members, and then we set up the uh, uh, scientific committee and then discuss the one year and including the PMDA or some other members. Then we published papers. Maybe I, in my uh, uh, evening talk, I will show you the paper, it's just quick. But, so uh, the, uh, uh, the product was belong to the uh, MICEP 2018 and uh, uh, other countries' uh, guidelines. So the uh, EB is a kind of a biological medicine, right? And the second uh, event is just the Japanese uh, FDA PMDA. They set up the actual uh, 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 the, uh, scientific uh, uh, the committee and then uh, talking about the uh, EB as a biological medicine and the regulatory science. Then uh, we announced in Japanese, I'm sorry, now we are working on the English version. So then, but this is almost belong to the as a, a US uh, the controlling or something and the MICEP and ICEP societies. Yeah. Thank you. So how about Yongso about? Yeah, yeah so actually the in Korea, uh, I don't remember exactly, but the uh, year 2020, okay, FDA already making the guideline, but the, that's very similar situation to the Japan because the in, in South Korea, so the uh, stem cell research or the stem cell society is very powerful, so they making uh, some guideline based on the stem cell drive to that goes something like that. But uh, after that, uh, well, as I remember, more than 40 or 15, 50, the accident company found in Korea that you also already made in the, uh, the found the uh, EV industrial organization uh, in Korea. But uh, unfortunately, uh, Korean uh, company got an uh, IND filing, not in Korea, but in Australia and USA. So that means that the KDF, KFDA making some confusion or the want some uh, some barrier to uh, going into the IND using the uh, extracellular desk. Uh, my the important last comment. Uh, not many so not many people doesn't know about the uh, bacterial desk. It's already. Uh, usually in clinical field. So, uh, year 2013, the uh, Bexel got an FDA and EU FDA uh, approval. So, the uh, if you have interest, uh, check up the what is the CMC protocol for the bacterial extracellular vascular to get our uh, IND filing and get a drug approval. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So how about psycho? Particularly, you are expert in the stem cell. Yeah. So, so I, I can only speak for the MSC EB. Um, I think uh, first of all, in my opinion, the MICEF uh, uh, recommendation is not really useful to be used for clinical <coughs> evaluation. This is more for the uh, academic. So. Um, in my personal opinion, I also feel that it is not necessary for regulatory uh, bodies to have specific guidelines for exosome because uh, the existing guideline is sufficient to cover it. So in my interaction with the FDA, the EMA, and also with our own HSA, uh, they have guidelines for what is safe. So basically when you approach them, they take the position, convince me that your product is safe, convince me that your product is reproducible. So we can give them the, the document and it say, oh no, this is not compensable. Show me more. You know? So it's a track and forth. So it took us more than a year and a half to finally convince them that it's safe and it's reproducible. So I think that is the bottom line. Even with the FDA, I think they also come with this attitude. Show me, convince me it's safe, convince me it's reproducible. And that, that probably is how we should guide our uh, application. Thank you. So how about uh, Dr. Lin? I'm a clinician, not, not an expert in exosome or regenerative medicine. So from clinical uh, perspective, and the most important is quality and safety. And not 
uh, F, which is most important is the uh, self-pitch. So now the, the aliens I mentioned uh, currently we are with the help of uh, our foreign uh, organization. Right? These aliens will work together with uh, Taiwan FDA and Taiwan CPE to form a uh, guideline that is useful not only for uh, clinical research but also for industrial development. So I will, uh, with the uh, help of, of our uh, neighbor, neighbor uh, countries, uh, we can uh, work together with our experts here to perform Taiwan needs guideline. Yeah, so based on the uh, discussion, so we just go along first. Okay, so based on just uh, what we just discussed or you just mentioned, so I believe there's uh, some uh, EV related company already in your countries. Even you can probably some of you already involved together with those company. So what's the uh, government guideline or to follow those uh, products from those companies in your from your uh, country? Can you share? Yeah. So so I think really like I think Chris actually like raised a critical question whether it's time. To develop this uh, government uh, guideline, I, I'm not quite sure about uh, uh, Taiwan or Japan or um, South Korea. Actually, I serve for the uh, National Standardization Committee uh, for uh, Traditional Chinese Medicine, and in mainland at least, the staff will usually have a consensus from the academia industry first, and then this actually would be like ad adopted by a society, and then we actually like take that as national standard. To my, I would throw out my opinion first because uh, and there are like many experts and uh, senior people um, in the state on stage. I think actually it's premature to have a um, how to say a therapeutic industry industry level standard or guideline for uh, EV. Because um, so um, CSAP actually started a initiated two years ago. Actually, I was uh, leading that effort for enger so called engineered exo exosomes. This was really like I feel like encouraged by a lot of industrial uh, interests, as uh, Tom Holmes mentioned, and I found that extremely difficult really, because the people have very different opinion about how to what is successful. To me, I think there's only not only like one method where technology or set of them were widely accepted by different industry for different uses. There could be it could be very useful for have some society guideline. I mean, maybe at the uh, on the border for like um, like diagnosis or academic industrial collaboration, but for a clinical standard, high quality CMC for like drug producing, to me, I think it's really difficult to reach a consensus. Like in my like for my from my opinion, in the last two years, but I only thought that's only my two cents. Yeah. Hello. Uh, so from Japan, on Japan. So there's uh, many yeah. EV products. Okay. So okay. How the Japanese government <laughs> yeah, or yeah. the people all right. uh, so. follow the any guideline they should follow? Okay. Or? So, all right. Okay. So I, and, and anyway, anyway, so I, I must uh, uh, should say that there is no uh, you know the uh, guideline. Just a comment from the uh, Japanese FDA and then uh, society. So. But uh, of course, the, this is a kind of medicine, so we don't care about that. There's a regular. Uh, the process of the, uh, the uh, product uh, medicine. But in Japan, we have a couple of the venture companies, but not yet the, uh, the uh, mega pharmaceutical companies not raise a hand for the EV production. But anyway, so in Japan, the program is probably the, uh, yesterday talked by Maruta, my colleague, and Yu Fujita today. Uh, Yu Fujita is the one uh, is most closest to the uh, uh, phase one. Uh, pass in pass in my trial, but it's very very hard time for the <laughs> negotiation with the uh, Japanese FDA for the many uh, regulatory aspect because the uh, Japanese FDA don't know <laughs> what's the EV. So there's most of the time to to teach them <laughs> what this is exosome and the surface markers, what's the QC control and everything. It's very very hard hard time spent. But anyway, so that maybe it's most close to the for human. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
uh, still we have uh, lots of the venture companies is grown up, and then they are trying to do uh, mostly on the MSC and WE bills. But also, you wish there is another story for the brown character stars. So that still we will have not uh, the standard, but you know the many many uh, people uh, academia trying to the pre clinical to clinical studies, and then the budget is more, more uh, the government push for the e e e e therapeutic research. So you also you know you have so South Korea have some company right e e related company. So how they do they develop their company or product? Yeah, so in one world, as a scientist, during uh, my experience, every vascular is different. So the, every time I said that there is no standard in this field, so that that's depend on the individual uh, company or something, like uh, say, can set. So Korean government, after making uh, some guideline, so actually, they act like a hobby, okay? They want to make some standard, okay? You should follow this or this or this or something like that. So that that's not a good way. So the, that depends on the uh, individual company pipeline. So that they show that uh, this is the, what's this and what's the safety or same something. So that, that means that the CMC uh, itself, the problem with each company to persuade the uh, regulator. But the, uh, I mean, regulator can make uh, some kind of the standard guideline, something like that. That's my opinion. That's very same to the uh, general instructions of the when I was your editor in chief of general instructions of Esco, I said to the author, to the myself guideline, we cannot describe one standard, so that that depends on the each vascular research like that. Yeah. Okay, so how about cycle? So, so oh. you, you encounter some challenge from the Yeah, I think, I think, like I said, you know, um, Yongsung don't talk about CMC. Actually, uh, what kind of governs the CMC for EBS is actually not, not much different from uh, other drug because if you look at the the whole process, you can break the whole process into various stages. Each stage has very clear CMC. You know the cell line, the purification, the culture. In fact, most of these have precedence, regulatory precedence. You just have to follow. And the 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 composition, the final uh, CMC is unique to EP because you are putting in different parts. But each part in itself is not unique. So, so in fact, uh, if you look carefully, uh, there is guideline, there is precedence. You just have to find out which fits your process best. At the end, when you do the drug product, it's very simple. Also, you have the standard uh, release criteria. You know, you have to make it and the toxin free, blah blah blah. The whole works. But at the end, that is specific to your product, the unique product is the identity assay and also the potency assay that will be unique for your EV. The, uh, the rest of the release criteria actually have precedent in other drugs. So, so all, like I said, the biggest challenge is the identity C2A and the potency C2A that we have to develop ourselves. Okay, so Dr. Lin, you talked with, uh, or discussed a lot with our FDA. So <laughs> what's your opinion uh, or your experience? from our FDA <laughs> about the EV product. Uh, our government actually is encouraged for the regenerative medicine. And so uh, currently we have two roles to act. Uh, I hope we'll be passed in, two, in a few months. But our, our FDA was considered to be the most strict in the world. <laughs> so, uh, like uh, SO1 by company, they have passed uh, DKPD, they have passed animal test and safety test, but the CMC actually is not uh, It's a big challenge and takes uh, maybe two years to to, cut, to, to to finish this CMC test with the Taiwan, C, uh, Taiwan FDA. So, I think uh, only by uh, um, mind 
that we can uh, develop our industry. So uh, I can we, we we have to work together. But how about present time? So you now as a president of the uh, position management thing, right? So so what's your opinion for uh, in uh, on behalf of those uh, huge industry? So how you think the EV should really go? Okay, all right, good. Besides guideline and regulation, I think what's equally important or more importantly is the mentality of quality system. I'm the founder of the first stem cell company here in Taiwan 24 years ago. Though. So the hard lesson we learned is the old saying, begin with the end in mind. So even in the early stage research, you have to have the mentality of this is going to go all the way to clinical trial, all the way to drug development. So I feel it's very active, research activity here in Taiwan or in this region. But then the quality system seems to be a little bit far behind. And that's the time we need to speed up with that mentality to, maintain, or to build a quality system and to maintain that and continuous improvement. That's more important than any guideline or regulation. Okay, thank you. So, so we talk about the product or the, uh, the, the medical product now uh, related to the EV. So why you think the minimum requirement or the label or something should be provided for the uh, patient or clinician? So if you have some product like a, a MSC derived exosome and for some indication, so not only for your own research, but if for the uh, industry or the those companies they want to sell, or what they should provide for clinician or hospital to know it's really good or any standard. I'm not talking about the the any standard about the CNC or the product per se. So, um, so recently, like I have a actually I found a company called Career, um, Career Biomed, and we have one of that like, the early, um, the first um, GMP production capacity in um, in, in China. So, um, actually, I, I want to both echo uh, Minister Lin and also uh, Chris again, because uh, for clinical in mind, I would really I think we really like actually want to be like surviving survival actually is the key, and uh, for for, for the regulation with the um, you know uh, in a certain layer would actually like uh, to have this in his mind security like the safety actually is uh, like the number one priority and um, I think the, the problem I actually I mentioned it seems like when I talk with different people they all have actually quite different even like actually like some people already push um, into clinical phase two for example there's a uh, fibrosis spring and like now they're like pretty inhalable and they have very different opinions. If like when we act again, we're trying to act like together, like try to reach a consensus, they won't really agree with each other. Really, like this is the balance for the cost and also for the safety. So I think actually from the Kodiak story, actually people talk a lot of this much these days. We really want to be. I think we want to be really cautious. We want to actually definitely like put the uh, safety at least. So for the for the panel's question, I'm sorry, I didn't have a specific answer. I'm not sure if you guys. Do, but yeah. So, how um, So, uh, I think you are suggesting a bit on the cosmetic, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, in in my opinion, I think if you look at the FDA, if whatever substance you are putting on the skin doesn't go beyond thirty micron, they don't care. And you show that it doesn't go beyond thirty micron because. You can see a lot of other crazy stuff you put on your skin, you know, uh, and and it's allowed as cosmetics. So I think the FDA, if you try to read the FDA uh, uh, regulation, at the time you reach the point where uh, the drug has to penetrate 30 microns in the skin, then you have other regulation. After that, they stop, you know, so you don't find any regulation. Because I think that becomes a cosmetic, and that comes under the Department of Trade and Commerce. It is not under FDA anymore. So, so basically, uh, in my opinion, for cosmetic, you don't have to convince the regulatory. You just have to convince the people that it works. You don't have to demonstrate that it works. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in South Korea, you have a big company because but uh, provide the cosmetic EV product, right? Yeah. So the uh, to the FDA, in my opinion, cost is not important. So the only the identity is very important, critical issue because that the FDA want to regulate the adverse impact only. So that means that the every batch or the every product has the same identity. So here the concern, yeah, 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 concerning is very simple. So uh, how pure our sample? That doesn't matter. So the, just to make him rage. But the, I am a chemist. So the, to the point of the chemist view, if your sample is higher, more pure, then means that the specific effort of the exposure should be higher. So the, that's the problem of the industrial side, not to the regulator side. So the, uh, I want to say that just breathe, so the showing the, your uh, EV identical. Yeah, that's the reason why we follow the CMC process as you say. Can. So most of the CMC part is not unique to the best. That's the same to the antibody or, yeah, that's the same, not unique to the infrastructure like that, in my opinion. All right, so about the show, you have any opinion? Yes, uh, okay, so maybe in Japan, if you visit Tokyo Ginza, and you walk 10, 10 meters, you see the clinics and the exosome. Better. <laughs> and many, more than, I, I counted more than 26 at least. <laughs> and more growing. The, uh, the meaning of the exosome therapy is a culture supernatum of mesenchymal stem cells. And sometimes uh, the, uh, uh, the, the dry powder or something. But the, uh, that's why I am very feel the very dangerous situation, what happened. And then uh, in my laboratory as academia, uh, uh, many, many samples come into my laboratory from Korea, <laughs> Singapore, Taiwan, and many other countries, Malaysia, and Vietnamese. And then uh, we checked. I, I, I don't say which one which, but there's a huge number of particles by the nanocyte, MTA. But there's no uh, exosome, CD9 or CD6, rear 81 positive. So that, that's a problem for us. And then uh, we just, that's why we need a the people don't know the uh, uh, don't know that exosome is not equal to the collagen supernatum. Some companies one is colored red. Colored red mean they know red. This is very highly toxic for human body. That's why I always that's wondering. That's so, that's so if any product or the EV product or exosome product, so we need to ask them to show how they isolate or yeah. but many of them are just uh, concentrated. So still contaminate a lot of the, yeah. the uh, soluble protein yes. and many of the soluble protein actually is uh -huh. waste yeah. due to the cell uh -huh. culture. Yeah. So do you see okay. any minimal requirement to show they have to do the purify or something? Um, first of all, um, first of all, any product that is delivered systemically has to go through the regulatory. You cannot put it on the market and sell it. So once it goes through the regulatory, Phase one, phase two, phase three, market approval. All the uh, use is all established. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to worry about the label. So the label will be part of the authorization process. <coughs> it's the illegal part where nobody can control that is the problem. But in Japan, it's legal. Uh, right now. In by in, by in, legal. Yeah. Yeah. It's not legal, but the gray zone now. Yeah. It's not illegal. <laughs> not, yes, not illegal. But not illegal. But the, the problem is, so the, the second knows well, but it, even in uh, very fresh uh, the uh, MSC, the passage uh, if over the six or five is becomes an essence. Yeah. The the culture uh, the cell phenotype looks nice, but definitely they become the senescence. Yeah. And then senescence EVs and some of the uh, metabolites in the, in the uh, West, and on, in the culture supernatum, and maybe exosome, they say, the purified, 100% purified exosome, they say, but, uh, and it's very skeptical, mm -hmm. and there's a problem for us. So that, 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 that's why Japanese government decided to check 
those credits and uh, some of uh, the CDMO business. On the, uh, if you, they said exosome, this is, this, this is, there is a, some comment they show that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I met a Japanese dental surgeon one time and he came up to me and he wants yes. to my exosome. I said, ah. yeah, but this are research type. Right? It's not approved. Okay. He said, in Japan, it's okay. Yeah, Japan is okay. Okay, surgeon. Okay, everything's oh. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Especially okay in 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 some clinics, and they produce in clinics level and CPC and something like that. Then it keep the safety issues, but I'm not sure what the safety is. Uh, I'm afraid of sepsis happen. Uh, yeah. It's contaminated. Yeah. So that all the uh, but now it's announced that some from Japanese FDA that exos if you mention exosome. There is a something the condition like right? yes. Yeah. So that I can some uh, control, but uh, we're not sure. Right? So the the Takaru you mean that uh, in Japan, so the under the only under the charge of the medical doctor they can do everything. That that right? Yeah. How about the non medical doctor? <laughs> yeah, only the medical doctor <laughs> under the charge of the medical doctor. So, so the medical doctor becomes responsible for the yeah, patient. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Without the use of insurance. Yeah. No, Double no, insurance. No, no, no. Yeah. No yeah, we that, uh, definitely we'll open one or two questions from the audience. But if so you can think about what the question you want to ask. And but the last before that, so I would like to uh, have all of you to share. Okay. So what's the because most of your actions work in um, uh, EB research. So how, what kind of the guideline you use in your laboratory to, to uh, produce or isolate or produce or categorize the EB? So that our audience to have uh, some ideas. Well, um, well, I think this is really dangerous. So in terms of pipeline, uh, and the main line that I didn't mention, we still didn't have a national level, level guideline. But we started having some like provincial level. For example, Guangdong uh, province where uh, Guangzhou and Shenzhen are, there are like so, there are so many of this uh, exosome related uh, um, cosmetics, and they started actually like trying to actually like uh, have some pretty uh, strict guideline just to avoid. I think this might be health. It's actually like important to us to keep a healthy growth for uh, our industry. So yeah. So, uh, uh, yes, uh, this morning, uh, Sankyan's talk is everything, and no, no more and no less. So, but, and she mentioned about tangential PFL. Of course, this is a main cause for the EV uh, purification. But uh, during these four years, I have touched on four different uh, Japanese uh, companies for very excellent technology for the uh, membrane and the, uh, or uh, uh, ion uh, chromatography system. But, Quite a different uh, the final product of the uh, MSC uh, derived culture supernatant and purified it. And uh, some, uh, it's, it's not only the purity, 98% or 90%, but also how, uh, how much they contain the, uh, the, with, yeah, the okay. yeah, yeah, something like that. And also the EVs. But this is also mentioned in the uh, Saikian talk. If we make uh, what type of uh, the tangential flow system is effective, will not change the EV uh, phenotype. Or sometimes, well, through uh, throughout the uh, tangential flow, the number of particles is increasing. They're amazing. 50, 12 percent is increasing the number of EVs. But those are CD9 positive and the CD6 positive. The EVs. But that's that, that's uh, my question. But Anyway, in Japan now we are we need hurry up the CDMO. It's it's completely belong to the summer comment or guideline for the EV and the societies, and that that's the most important issue. Then what type of the, uh, the, uh, the downstream process for the EV purification and machines? Uh, what type of machines uh, 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 could be a golden starter? So that that's uh, that's my question, and it's still not yet but so. Right. So so. Um I think uh, uh, academics always ask very difficult questions mm -hmm. and they set very difficult standards. That's why I think myself 2018 is not suitable for things like application. So um, that's why I also don't uh, propose that we set guidelines like uh, 
uh, Akan Hero just said, uh, the technology is evolving and evolving very fast. So uh, if you, when you go into manufacturing, uh, you go in, your SOP is locked You have very little chance to change, especially when you hit phase three. You cannot change a single thing. So uh, once you get in, you lock in your SOP and you have to stick with it. So, um, so it is important and also the regulatory understanding. So we are not so concerned is, oh, are you getting pure or not? But we are more concerned is reproduce first. So if you have this product and some of the musicals have CD9 coming from the membrane, okay, you have to stick with that. You have to live with that contamination. But the last, the final thing is, is this safe, even with the contamination? And can you reproduce this together with the con con contamination? The contamination now has to follow you throughout. So, so that's what they want. Yeah, so in my opinion, the controlling the contamination is more difficult than the isolation of the pure exergen. Okay, that's most most important. Uh, in chemistry, what is the definition of the isolation? Isolation means that uh, purify something from the mixture. So the one of the best way to purify something from the mixture by combination of the two different kinds of the method. Okay, that's first one. And second, when I uh, studied the evil field during the long time, I realized that every kind of the, the technology uh, using, used by all is not perfect. So the, when you're thinking about that uh, nanoparticle tracking analysis, you have, nobody knows that how many percent of the particles counted by the NK, and we have no idea the what is the real the size distribution measured by the dynamic light scattering. And we also thinking about that the transmission electron microscope. So the, we have no idea which kind of the molecule prefer to the bind to the grid. But that only after that we show that the result. So that, that means that the, there is a very big technical limitation. So that, that means that just to uh, believe yourself, then show that, okay? So the, in our group, every time to submit the EV research, figure what you just say, okay? Electron microscope, and size distribution, number of the particle, and rest. Or oh, actually, the, I don't believe that. But the, everybody wants that. We just do that, okay? So uh, I recommend just believe by yourself based on the, your of background the understanding of the technology. Yeah, I guess it's to collaborate with the academic and to build up the system before you really get into your uh, industrialization. Uh, less for that. So we open for only one question from audience. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the excellent uh, sharing the knowledge of exosomes. Uh, uh, my, my name is uh, Dr. Sona and I'm a gynecologist. Uh, okay, uh, my question is, uh, since we knew that all the cells, they secrete exosomes, okay, or, or extracellular vesicles. Uh, so, some says, uh, why not just drink milk from the cow? Okay, you get the exosomes, okay. So my uh, my point is that uh, is there any strict criteria uh, for the definition of uh, uh, purified exosome products? That means uh, you have to, uh, already excluded the contamination problems and also the quality of the exosome and the size or the or the markers, so on. So does any of our expert, experts can give a, you know, share, share his knowledge about strict criteria of exosome? Thank you. Okay, I think uh, uh, Yong, Yong Song so just said that uh, from the chemistry, you can purify pure something, but 
when it comes to EV, you cannot isolate pure. You can only enrich. So when you enrich means you have to live with your contaminants. Uh, and like I said, you know, you just have to find out how much contaminants, what are the contaminants, and reproduce it every single time. Because that preparation with the contaminant, if that works, then you have to assume that you have to reproduce it. That's it. So is it anybody uh, here to isolate the real pure exodon in your experience? <laughs> so the, I tried that. So the one amazing thing when I isolate real, real pure exodon, what's happening on there? So on next day, we cannot detect anymore from the passenger of the queue. The, this meaning is very important. So the in my opinion, the exodon or the extracellular vascular have the, some hydrophobic character. That means that they, they stop to the somewhere. <laughs> okay, that's the reason why the impurity did <laughs> to stabilize the colloidal stability of the exodon. So the, I fully agree with the Zekian's opinion. So the purity. Oh, the absolute pure is not essential because if we have some absolute pure exodon, we cannot handle that. So that we cannot predict the property of the or the pure exodon. Yeah, I guess in that, uh, I believe in nature. So the exosome definitely do something, but actually we cannot exclude like a cytokine or other things in our body. They work together. So. Some contaminant probably good, but you should look you know the contaminant probably bad for body, right? So I still really want to like quickly echo um Tang Long also. Do we really want some strict guideline to have very pure exosomes? Because I feel like like the other day a person actually came to me, uh, he was working on like, the milk, I feel like I said. Actually to me I think it's pretty shocking. What they did, they actually like the whole company was based on that concept. They went to a grocery store, pick up like a bottle of milk, and they actually could actually like third claim, they could actually like purify a lot of exosomes and for different therapeutic uh, uses. I don't know. I don't know. I, we do we could actually get pretty pure something, but we really want to actually consider I think like two aspects. One, whether this is feasible, and two, whether this is sustainable. For example, the other day I talked with a person from uh, Brist Bristol Myers Squibb. They have one of these actually like a very good monoclonal uh, anti rheumatoid enterocarditis uh, drug um, called uh, Ar uh, Arba, Arba Sleep. So, um, but for this many years, um, th like the, the chat, they didn't get into the, uh, the medical coverage uh, in mainland. They just couldn't really sell at all almost. Because one of the reasons is because CMC, this is a antibody with a lot of glycosylation. To actually, like, as the as psychiatrist said, you could actually produce it, but to make this every single time, because it is like a very complex modification process, it's difficult. And it's more, but if you have very strict rule, you can do that, it's more expensive. So I don't know whether we want to have some those kind of things for the current exosome market, because uh, it's going to actually like really increase the cost a lot. Yeah, so exosome probably one of, uh, just one of the ingredients for some therapeutics, but we are not really uh, pursue it's a only exosome, right? But I don't know, it's probably there's another point of view from the industry side. But anyway, because of the time, so we can, we yeah, so there's a little more. Why the uh, controlling impurity uh, is more difficult than getting uh, isolated uh, exosome? That's my opinion. All right, because time limit, because we have a lot the other section in this room as well. So if you have a question, you can uh, uh, talk to all of the panelists later on. Okay, so thank you again for joining this uh, panel discussion. And then we will finish here. Thank you very much. And thank you again for all the panelists.